Hi everyone, so today I'm going to show you how you can generate a bitmap file for use with displaying on an OLED screen such as a 128 by 64 pixel monochrome display. And I'm going to show you how to do this using the Arduino IDE and an AtTiny85. So you're going to want to open up Photoshop and create a new document. We're going to name the document whatever you want, so I'm just going to call it File for OLED and make sure that it's 128 by 64 pixels at a resolution of 72 pixels per inch and keep it in grayscale. So now we're just going to click OK and the file is going to create. So zoom up the file because it's a very low resolution so you can just do Command Plus. So now we have a basic starting template for our file. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool to just create a rectangle for our background. And you're just going to want to keep your colors in strictly black and white because when we actually start making this into bitmap, uh, we're going to have to actually export it so it's only black and white colors, no grayscale. So I'll have a nice rectangle there. I'm going to change the background fill to black. Uh, we're going to get rid of this little border around the outside. And actually, rather than a black background fill, I'm going to do something like lines, just like that. So now I'm going to create an inside rectangle, just like this, with a black fill. And now I'm going to free transform it so that I can uh, make it so the border on the outside is even. This is just purely decorative. You can do basically whatever you want with this as long as it's in black and white and the text that we're going to put in later uh, has room to be legible. So there we go. I'm liking that. Now what we're going to do is go into image mode bitmap. This is going to convert it into a bitmap file which is basically just a representation of each pixel and what color that pixel is. So you see here there's a little bit of gray in here. That's just going to turn into either black or white and it's going to flatten all of our layers down. So we're going to press OK, and here's our new bitmap file. You can see there's a little mistake sometimes in here where it tries to convert the gray into white or black, and it doesn't look as good as it did before, but it's not going to show up that clearly on our small display, so that'll be OK. So now I'm going to select the text tool and make sure that we're white, um, because, or that we're using color white because we're going to be typing on this black background here. So I don't know, maybe I'm just going to text my, or type my name, Alex Wolf. And I'll put my email in here too, or my website. This bottom row here is hanging off the end, so maybe I'm going to bring the font size down a little bit to, let's try 12. And maybe rather than bold, we're going to just make that regular. Just make it easier to see at that small font size. And there we go. So I'm going to press Command so I can drag this to wherever I want it. And there we go. So now I have a simple bitmap that we can display on a device. So now we're just going to save this as a bitmap file. So I'm going to click File, Save As. And now we're going to select BMP or bitmap. And I'm just going to save this in my downloads folder. And we're going to save it as a Windows format and then one de or one bit color. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to need to open up um, a program called LCD Assistant. And since I'm on Mac, I'm going to need to run this inside of Wine Bottler because this file is a um, this file is made specifically for Windows. So I'm going to open that up. Uh, it's here somewhere. There it is. So we're going to open up LCD Assistant, and it's going to ask me to run this inside of Wine, which is OK. So I'm going to let this load. Looks like I just started two instances of it. There we go. So this is LCD Assistant, and you can see it's got Windows format, and everything looks like it's in Windows, but this is running on a Mac. So we're going to go File, Load Image, 
and I've already navigated my downloads folder, but you need to navigate where you put your file. And I'm going to need to find it out of this list. So let's see, I called it file for OLED. So I think if I just type, no, it's not going to let me. Um, file for OLED. There it is. So we're going to open it up. It's going to give me a preview of the file right here. And now I can set up some options. So depending upon the library you're using to display the image, you might want this in vertical or horizontal orientation. Some displays are different. So if the original file that you're going to generate doesn't work and just looks like it, there's pixels in random order, uh, you're going to want to try the other orientation that you did not use. So it'll automatically do the size of your image. So we're just going to leave it 128 by 64. This is going to be fine. 8 pixels per byte. And now the table name is what the variable name inside of the header file that we're going to generate is actually called. So call this file or call the table name what you want to reference your image as. Now we're going to go to file save output and I'm going to call this file for OLED.h. So now we've generated a header file that you can use in Arduino. There's just one more thing that we need to do before you can actually import it and start using it as data inside of your libraries. So open up the file in text editor of choice. I'm using Sublime Text. And after these little curly brackets here, you're gonna to wanna to put the term or the command programmem. So this is just telling the compiler that you want this variable to be put into the program memory of uh, the Arduino that's being specifically used for program memory and not for other things like global variables. So, and that'll just help us uh, with reliability issues on something like an at tiny 85. So you can see here, uh, if I do a search command for a comma, you'll see that there's actually 1024 of these little uh, hex values right here. And this last one doesn't have a comma, so that's why it's 1024, not 1023. So each one of these is a byte of information, which is eight bits. And as you see, there are 128 by 64 pixels on our display. So 128 by 64 is 8,192. And there's 10 hundred and or there's 1024 bytes in this file. So if we multiply 1024 by 8, you'll see that it's the same result as the number of pixels in our bitmap. So each one of these little bits here, instead of each one of these bytes, corresponds to a uh, bit actually in the file. So there you go. Now you can use this variable right here uh, as the data argument in functions that display images on Arduino.